Today we'll walk through how to access your application data with the data tree, how to understand data types, and how to move data across applications with the data mapping. So to see how we can move data across apps properly, let's jump into my team's workspace to see how all these concepts tie together. So in this recipe, if the trigger catches a new or updated Salesforce case of case type problem and is marked as high priority, then the recipe will kick off. If a corresponding JIRA issue exists, the issue will be updated. And if the case doesn't exist, the recipe will create a new JIRA issue and update the Salesforce case. Now, our engineering team would like to see a timestamp in the JIRA issue. To do this, I'll click into step three, the update issue step. And on the right, we can see we have fields from our JIRA issue. A few fields already have data, like the JIRA issue key to find the JIRA issue, as well as the description to post the latest updates from support for the engineering team to see. Now, down below, we've added a custom field in JIRA to hold that information called latest update in Salesforce. So how do I go about adding that information into JIRA? Well, once I click into the field, you'll notice something to the left popped up, and that's the data tree. And in the data tree, every step, both triggers and actions, brings data into the recipe. In this case, we have data from our Salesforce case pulled from the trigger step, which we can see at the top of the tree. And within the data tree, each piece of data is represented as a pill, like the case ID, the description, and status, which we can see here. And in the data tree, the data is presented hierarchically. So some data may be nested under others, which is why it's called the data tree, because it sort of resembles a tree with branches. And since there's a lot of data here, to make it easier to browse, I'll go ahead and expand it by clicking this maximize icon at the top right of the widget. Now within the data tree, a key concept to note are the data types. In our case, we can see that the last modified date pill is a timestamp, because to the left of the pill, we have this neat little calendar and clock icon, which indicates that it's a timestamp. And to the right, we have sample data that we can see as both the date and time listed. Now it's important to note that this sample data isn't actually the data that will flow through, but rather a representation using data from within our Salesforce instance. There are other data types as well. The most common are strings, which are basically just text and is represented by this ABC icon. And we also have this one, two, three icon to represent numbers, to name just a few. Another neat thing to note is right next to these Jira issue pills, they're in this rich blue or teal color. And what that means is they are custom fields that are unique to just our Salesforce case objects. And back on the right, you'll notice that the data fields, data types are also labeled with this ABC and calendar clock icon. And since they're also custom fields, they're also marked with that same rich blue text like in the data tree. So finally, to move the date time data from Salesforce to Jira, we have to map the data. Now mapping just refers to how data flows from one step in a recipe to another step in a recipe. So from the data tree, I can map the last modified date pill, which is the one we want, by dragging it over into the latest update in Salesforce field on the right. Now, you'll notice that I have two fields here with the same name, but I only map the data pill to the field below, the one that accepts date time data. Why is that? I've done this to point out that though the fields may look identical, it's important to map data into a field that accepts the same data type. The date time field below will keep the data in the same date time format and is able to translate it into information our engineering team can actually use. Whereas the string field will convert the data to text and can affect how downstream apps or systems interpret that information. This is why it's critical to map data to fields that accept the same data type whenever possible. It reduces the chance of errors, leads to an improved user experience, and leads to consistent data. So that's how you can get started moving data across your apps. To learn more about the data tree and data mapping, 
you can visit our docs at docs.workado.com. I hope this helps, and as always, thank you for watching.